Welcome to my page, Blissfully Single Bean. Before I get into my review of Ready to Love, I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I've had this YouTube page for one year now to help me promote my Blissfully Single um, Bean blog. And the two re the reviews that I put up last week for Ready to Love were my highest viewed videos. So I thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Everyone that subscribed to me, okay? It wasn't a million people that subscribed to me. I picked up 10 new um, subscribers and I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart because this insecure girl feels so happy that someone wants to come back to hear what I have to say. So that subscription means a lot. If you're new to this ch channel and if you like what you see, please like, comment, and subscribe. Very much appreciated. And then I wanted to give one more word of thanks to Zeke Music. Zeke Music hit me up and said, say here, sis, I couldn't get through one of your videos because the sound quality was not great. You should invest in a mic. And I knew that because when I was editing my, editing my videos last week, I was like, oh, girl, oh, ooh, this sound is not good. So I jumped on Amazon to find a mic so that I can have a dedicated um, audio um, output. So I did that. So again, Zeke music, I really do appreciate it because I feel like on people are so critical online and so nasty. The fact that you were able to give me that feedback in a nice way and not make me feel like garbage. I really do appreciate it. So thanks a lot, Zeke music. And I hope you come back to watch, um, my other reviews. So thank you. So, okay. Getting into it. We open up with that. <sighs> Atlanta skyline. You know, I get hyped when I see the Atlanta skyline because a chick loves her life here in the suburbs on Long Island, but a chick also wants to be, you know, somewhere where are, there are people like me. So Atlanta is one of those um, cities that I'm thinking about moving to in a few years. So, you know, every time I see it on TV, I get hyped. So Tommy and the elite eight women that are left, they meet up at a wine bar. And I have to say, I had the opportunity to visit a wine bar, a few, not a wine bar, I'm sorry, Cynthia Bailey's Real Housewife of Atlanta's wine bar. I went there with a friend. Oh my gosh, it was such an amazing experience. Because at first I was like, wine bar, like what do people do there? You drink wine. This wine, oh, should love it. And I did. I went there. I got a bottle for myself. Cynthia Bailey wasn't there, but her sister Mallory was there. Oh my God. These girls got good looks. She was tall, beautiful. She was nice. She was pouring my liquor. I was like, oh my God, Mallory is not pouring my liquor. She was. <laughs> and so a few other people came in throughout the day. We had conversation from, from we, had, we had, it was good conversation, good adult conversation. I appreciated that flex and you know, I, I need more of it. I need more of it in my life. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can find a wine bar around where I live, but if I do, it's going to be a whole bunch of rich white old men that I cannot relate to. So yeah, that's that. Atlanta, I get hyped every time I see Atlanta on the screen. But anyway, the Elite Eight, they meet up at a wine farm, and Tommy's talking to them, and Tommy's letting them know their assignment for this week. So their assignment for this week is to get past the representatives, and I kind of didn't understand what he was asking the girls to do, but it was somewhere along the lines of, your homegirls have got to watch the guys and go on dates with each other. So I guess, I guess that was the gist of it. So I was like, oh, okay. But anyway, two men are going to be eliminated for this episode. And it is the women's job to not only pick the men who are going to be eliminated, but a couple of the girls have got to deliver the news. So let's get to work, ladies. So Chica and Nina go on a date because, you know, Nina says, you know, she hasn't been able to really get a um, close-up view of who Chica is. I'm like, okay, yeah, girl, whatever. So anyway, they sit down, they meet, and Nina wants some clarity about Chica and his blow-up with Ashima. Nina was like, explain. So Chica goes into, you know, how, you know, it, you know, it wasn't, I don't even think he owned as much as saying it wasn't his, of his proudest moment. He said, you know, admittedly, he did raise his voice a little bit. I'm like, a little bit. I was on the other side of the TV and I was like, oh dear God, 
please don't let him go off and hit this woman. So I don't think it was a little bit. I think you were loud. I think you were standing up. I think if the women felt uncomfortable, they should as they were a few feet away, as I felt uncomfortable several states away watching this nonsense. So anyway, he completely did not own it. He even went as far as to say, Ashima, you can tell Ashima has had one too many drinks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so typical. So typical. Instead of you guys owning your nonsense and saying, all right, I blew up, I was wrong. I think she was drunk. Okay, whatever, Chica. But Nina's not buying any of it. And Nina's like, you know what? I kind of want to be with someone that I'm... Uh, I, I guess she said something along the lines of she wants to be someone, with someone that she's comfortable with. So I don't, she doesn't think Chica is it. And Chica was like, yeah, I kind of understand. But the only people's opinions that I care about are the people that I'm interested in. <laughs> Meaning... Nina, he doesn't like you anyway, so your opinion of him is null and void. But Chica didn't own anything of it, and, and, and any of his part of it, and I think that was hella whack on Chica's part. So anyway, they both leave the date, and there will be no love connection between Nina and Chica, and yeah, that sounds about right to me. So then... Alexis and London go on a date. Now, London wants to get to know Alexis a little bit more, and it's understandable. London is a very pretty girl, and he's attracted to her initially, so he kind of wants to, you know, dig in, peel into the layers, and see if this is something that he wants to pursue because he haven't, hasn't seen much of Alexis. And I will say as the viewer, too, up to this episode, I haven't seen much of Alexis, which annoys me why all the guys are, like, chasing after her because it's the initial it's the initial. I haven't seen any part of Alexis's personality that would show me what kind of person she is. As a matter of fact, the first conversation that she had with Chica, where she was talking about her ex or whatever, it kind of gave me a, put a bad taste in my mouth for who she is. But again, it's edited. It's two sec. It's a two minute conversation. It's not the bigger picture, but I can understand what London is saying by needing to know who Alexis is a little bit more. So... They go out on a date and, um, oh boy, how can I say this without sounding like a complete bitch? <clears throat> <clears throat> Alexis shares that she's had a rough upbringing because she was so pretty that all the girls were jealous of her. So she had to fight a lot. She's been in and out of juvie and th this is this is this is my take on this a pretty girl is not gonna make me feel bad for you because you're pretty no i'm not gonna have a bleeding heart because you were so pretty that other girls were jealous of you which is essentially what she says so the other girls were jealous of her so apparently she had to scrap like i, I guess the scrapping took her to jail i to me being pretty is not a hardship and i mean you girls watching in, please comment in the description box. Am I being too harsh on Alexis? Being pretty is not a handicap. Being pretty is not a hardship. So for her to come from that standpoint to kind of give London a little bit more of a bigger picture of who she is, no, no. Alexis's past is not interesting on that standpoint. I need to hear a little bit more than I was pretty and people are jealous of me. So London digs a little bit deeper. His dad and his mom were divorced at an early age. She got to a point where he moved to, was it Texas, to be with his dad. And moving to Texas with his dad kind of shaped him and formed him and made him the man he used to, that he, need, that he became through his relationship with his dad. Now he's in college and now he's... Um, now he, and it allowed him to play football. If I sound like I'm like just going off, it's because I was completely uninterested in London and Alexis's past. It was, there was nothing meaty. There was nothing, I didn't see any struggle. There was nothing that made me say, oh, oh man, dad, I see how they connected. And most of all, at the end of the day, even though Alexis was like, oh yeah, we're, we're going, we're, we got closer. I, I didn't see that. I didn't see the chemistry. I just saw two highly attractive people trying to make it work. I didn't see any chemistry. 
I didn't. Actually, I saw a little bit more chemistry with Divine. I was saying her name wrong all last week. I kept saying Devin, but it's not my fault. Black people try to get too creative with their name. Devin's name is spelled D-E-V-Y-N. No, I'm sorry. Divine. This is why I keep getting messed up. Divine's name is spelled D-E-V-Y-N. When I see it, I see Devin, not Divine, because I graduated as an English major, and the way you spell Divine is D-I-V-I-N-E. So anyway, I say all this to say, I saw a little bit more chemistry with Divine and London than I saw with Alexis and London, and them kind of unpeeling their past a little bit did nothing to change my mind. They, it didn't touch me. Reva and Carrie go out on a date, and you know, Kerry is the 51-year-old pharmaceutical salesman. I don't know what Reva does for a living, and I really don't care right now because she's really on my don't like you list. So Kerry throws a brunch and invites a few of the people over. And before everybody comes over, Reva has some concerns. So she gets there the earliest, and she's like, great. I'm glad that I was here early because I want to ask you about something. And he was like, oh, what's going on? What happened? She was like... Um, you, this morning you text me, you said, good morning. I was okay with that text. <laughs> what do you mean you're okay with that text? It was a salutation. Okay. Uh, to me, why mention, why even mention that? But then she is concerned because I had to lubricate my mouth because I'm about to go in on Riva's ass in a second. But then she was a little bit concerned because he sent another text message to her later that day. And I have to read it um, word for word. Quote. <clears throat> so if I, if so, if, I'm sorry. So if you screamed my name out in pleasure, what would you call me? So this is what Carrie texts Reva. Reva was just like, oh. I'm, I, I didn't answer the text message. I didn't know how to answer the text message because, you know, I was taken aback by the text message. Really? You were taken aback by a text message? Really? Wasn't it last week that you told the same Carrie that one of the three most important things in life for you to do is to bust a nut? So now he texts you that when he makes you bust said nut, what are you going to call him? Big Papa, Zeddy, Mandingo, Mandingo. At the end of the day, it seemed like a fair question to me. It really does. Because baby girl, that sexual conversation, you open that sexual conversation up with him. So don't get mad when he follows up with an equally as sexual and trifling ass question. I think it made a lot of sense. I think the question wasn't far from left field. You presented as sexual, he's giving that energy right back to you, baby girl. So for her to sit up on her sanctimonious, uh, 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 high horse, like, oh my gosh, how dare he speak to me like that? Yeah, he's going to come at you like that because you came at him like that. When you said busting a nut is something that was really important to you. Remember last uh, review, if you saw, I said, hold that conversation because I'm about to get into Reva's ass this week. Go, Reva, go sit your hypocritical ass down somewhere. Sit your, and I was talking to my friend about it. And my friend was like, in real life, I kind of understand how he came at Reva with that text message. But on the show, he shouldn't have done that because it's not a strategic move to play because she could use it against him as she tried this episode. So Carrie said, I sent it to you and it was, um, I sent it to you on purpose. It was a calculated text message because you keep calling me cat daddy, cat daddy, cat daddy. And then Reva did say that they typically call him cat daddy. But um, Carrie says, you keep calling me cat daddy. And I wanted to know if you even know my, knew my real name. And I'm like, yeah, I, can, I don't believe you, Carrie. I don't care. I, I, <laughs> you can go sell that line to whomever, wherever you came from. I don't believe that. I, would, I think you were being a tickle, typical man who was trying to get that sex talk popping. But at the same time, I don't blame you because Reva started it. So anyway, Reva, you know, they, they hash it out. They work it out. And Reva was like, great. I'm glad we had this conversation. Now we're able to clear the air. Mm -hmm. 
We'll see what happens later. Anyway, everybody comes in. Who was there? Darren was there. Ashima was there. Nina was there. Um, Kimber was there. So they came to Carrie's house to have this brunch or whatever. And then um, Darren was like, um, let's see, Nina. Uh, can, 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 can I talk to you for a minute? And then pan to Darren, um, flashing his confessional. Yeah, I feel like I had a connection with Nina. When did you have a connection with Nina? When was it? I've, I've been, I, I, listen, I am three episodes in and I've never heard you even remote. I, have, I haven't seen you look at Nina's direction. I haven't seen you talk about Nina. I, when did you like her? Talking about I have a connection with her. I've never seen you say, hey, that one with the thick neck and the peacock hair cut? cut? Yeah, I, I've never seen you come at Nina. So for him to be like, oh yeah, I've had a connection with Nina. You don't have a connection with Nina. A producer whispered into your ear. Go talk to Nina. Now, nah, y'all not going to get me with this contrived nonsense. There was nothing that I have seen up until now that would make me believe that Darren was checking for Nina like that. Man, pish posh, please, whatever. Dina and, um, Darren and Nina were talking to go back and forth. There was no chemistry. I was just over it. I'm just, I'm looking at contrived production, not interested, don't want it. I don't believe you wanted her. I believe we're trying to keep a storyline and um, uh, an episode juicy, but yeah, no, whatever. So Nina's like, oh girl, oh boy, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I'm sure you don't. So, um... Aisha. Every time I say her name, I think about, was it Color Me? It was, it was not Color Me Bad. It wasn't Immature. It was earlier than that. Aisha, you are the girl that I never had. Uh, if you are as old as me and you know where that comes from, the group that that comes from, please drop in the description box. It was a little boy group. It wasn't, it wasn't Immature. It went f further than that. It wasn't. I think it was a group that uh, that had to do with that whole BBD, Belle of DeVoe movement, whatever. But every time I hear her name, like the spunk, Aisha, you are the girl I never had. But anyway, I digress. Aisha and Brent meet up for a date. First of all, when I saw where they met up, I'm like, is that a venue or is it someone's house? So there, because it was just, oh my gosh, there was brick hardwood floors it was stunning so as they were talking Brent said oh I invited Aisha over to talk or whatever and I have to say out of all the BS dates I saw on this episode granted still a good episode but 95% of these dates were BS okay so out of all the dates I have to say I connected with Aisha and Brent's date the most because when they were trying to unravel each other's past and kind of get, dig in and see more of the person. Both of them had significant experiences that aligned with one another. Aisha was in a physically um, abusive relationship and she had to get divorced. She lost everything to get away from this man. Brent also went through a divorce. So, a divorce is a very serious, um, significant thing. Thankfully, I've never been married, so I've never had to go through a divorce. Thank you, Jesus. Lord knows when I was with my baby's father, all I can do was beg him to get married. He never wanted to get married. Years later, I thank God for that because we wouldn't have lasted through marriage and I would have, what I would have had to go through the divorce process. Looking at what my sister went through, my sister was the breadwinner. My sister made the six figures her husband not so much by the time they divorced my sister's ex-husband's life was set this man never worked a substantial day in his life he got half of the 401k he got so much money he was able to buy a house in connecticut look up connecticut connecticut is extremely expensive to live in i think connecticut is more expensive than new york or new jersey to live in so at minimum the financial ramifications of a divorce are devastating and again the financial part is at minimum then you got to put the kids in the picture then you got to put your own emotional well-being in the picture because a divorce is like a death you know it, listen a divorce is not fun so 
the fact that they were able to connect in that way, it's like, it was deeper. And I have to say, out of all the couples, Aisha and Brent are the ones that I am rooting for. They just seem so, they seem tailored for each other. They do, when it comes to the looks, when it comes to the experience, when it comes to the grownness and the maturity, Aisha and Brent. And damn, Brent's salt and pepper hair. Yes. So, Jimmy Jones and Terrell meet up and they're talking and Jimmy Jones says he wants to meet up with Terrell. Was I right? He wanted to meet up with Terrell to talk about Alexis. He's not understanding Alexis's energy. Um, and Terrell is talking to Jimmy Jones and he gets a phone call. Hi, it's Alexis. I'm sorry. I won't be able to meet up. So they're talking and Jimmy Jones was like, yeah, I'm not sure that um alexis is in this and terrell was like yeah i'm not feeling her energy too and J jimmy jones is, oh this is what jimmy jones says he doesn't understand alexis's energy what is there not to understand jimmy jones jimmy jones alexis is not interested in either you or terrell i mean what don't you understand when a man is not interested in a woman she he asks he he she he acts just like alexis acts he doesn't give any energy he cancels dates he essentially ghosts you so alexis is doing the same thing to you and terrell so what don't you understand she don't like you <laughs> like whatever guys i like to act so like eh, I, I don't understand would you guys do the very same thing it's just a woman handing your crap right back down to you sorry Sorry. But anyway, after Jimmy Jones, you know, leaves the, you know, luncheon or whatever he had with Terrell, now he goes on a date with Kimber. And I've always said that I feel like Jimmy Jones and Kimber are a, a good, I, I feel like they are a good match, but I feel like Jimmy Jones was so stuck up Alexis's ass because she is so pretty that he, Kimber was kind of second. So they meet up in a dog park. Kimber has the cutest little dogs. And I can see Kimber with these two cute little dogs. She's so cute. I can see her, you know, with those little, are they Pomeranian and things? Whatever, the cute dogs. I was pricing our dogs a few years ago. And I think I was looking at those type of dogs. The one dog was like $1,200. I'm like, shit, damn. But anyway, she has to the two dogs. And Jimmy Jones rolls up. Jimmy Jones, Jimmy Jones, Jimmy Jones, Jimmy Jones. He looks so good <laughs> no jimmy jones looked good when he went out to the dog park with um with kimber he looked good he had these nice um cut off jeans right below his knees his shirt was a, a crisp white shirt with a nice design that complemented the jeans and he had some air max on oh Yes, he looked really cute, but him and Kimber talked or whatever. Kimber expressed her concerns about him giving the heart to um, Alexis. Jimmy Jones really didn't have a good reason why he gave the heart to Alexis as opposed to Kimber, but somehow they ended up tasting each other's lips. They kissed and... Um, yeah, that was it. I, again, I think they look cute together, but based on that date, I don't see the chemistry chemistry like that. I kind of see two people that are getting to know each other, but I don't see the clicking. I don't see the clicking. So after that, um, Ashima and Darren meet up. Another couple I'm rooting for. They were just so cute together. They have the natural um, speaking cadence to each other. Like they flow very well together. The only thing I will say is, Ashima, stop bringing up your insecurity about being the funny girl. Because when you bring up an insecurity to a guy, a guy would be like, mm. a guy would like take that into consideration while maybe I shouldn't mess with her like that. She is a comedian. Don't show your insecurities too soon. They expose a vulnerability that, especially on this game, you, you don't want to open yourself up like that to someone too soon. So um, the girls get together. Well, Uncle Ta Tommy, mm, 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 mm. now it's discussion time. We want to see who will be going home. So the girls are talking about, you know, the different guys. Tommy asks, um... I, I, not Aisha. Tommy asked Alexis about her date with London. She was like, oh, I really like him. We are getting closer, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then Tommy's messy ass asks, um, D, not Devin, Divine, 
about London. Devon was like, oh, that's that's Bay right there. So, <laughs> so yeah, so you see Alexis and Devon, they're about to get into it over Mr. London. So this is going to be very, very interesting to see. Um, Ashima says that she's locking it down with Darren. And then here comes thick-ass Nina. Oh, really? <laughs> He's your only one, Ashima, because he didn't say that to me. <laughs> as in, um, Darren has eyes on her as well. First of all, no, I know I don't believe, I don't know what you believe, but I don't believe Darren generally has eyes on, um, on Nina. I do not. She hasn't made a love connection this far, and nothing is going to make me believe that from this one episode, Darren developed this kind of connection. No, not doing it. And then Nina was like, I don't know where Nina's getting this confidence from. Didn't you ask start off awkward as hell? Well, it's not over until Darren makes his choice. He's not going to choose your thick-ass neck over Ashima. I don't think so. I see more chemistry with Ashima, even if it may be more on the homeboy, homegirl front. I see more chemistry with Ashima than I see with you, Nina. So try again. Anyway, Ayesha, of course, says she is feeling friend as she should. And, of course, Kimber likes Jimmy. And um, when Kimber mentions how much she likes Jimmy, uh, she says, well, I do like Jimmy. But Jimmy did give a heart to the beautiful Alexis, where Alexis is like, you can have the heart. <laughs> about Alexis but she moves like a man and I respect that about her she was like <laughs> Alexis was like if you think I'm gonna get in my feelings over Jimmy Jones you got another thing coming because I don't like him like that Alexis was like I'll I, I glad you, gladly give you the heart Kimber and Kimber was like oh yeah look at this I like Jimmy Jones so much and then Alexis is not even bothered like like he's he's making me second to Alexis and Alexis doesn't even want him like that I mean all right that's the dating game <laughs> it is. That's why I'm 40 and I don't date. Because the dating game is messed up and it's not for the weak of heart. So, Kimberly, get with it. So, yeah. So, that was that. And then, um, Chica came up and, you know, Nina gives her two cents. And I'm like, Nina, you are being very sanctimonious for a girl who threatened murder last episode. So I'm going to leave it at there. But anyway, Chica is not one of the favorites and he's probably going to be on the chopping block. And then, um, Reva. And this is what I don't like Reva. Like you are, Reva brings up the fact that Carrie sent her a text message that was inappropriate. First of all, did you not have a conversation with Carrie and he explains himself, even though I didn't believe him and you ironed everything out? You said to this man, I'm glad we had this conversation and now we can move forward. But now during the elimination round, you're trying to get him eliminated. I don't like you, Reva. <laughs> I do not like you. But then again, Alexis steps in. And I'm starting to think maybe I'm not going to, uh, maybe I'm going to lead towards, I like her, I like her, I like her. Alexis is like, no, I think he's a nice guy. You know, A, B, C, I think we should keep him. And here comes um, Reva's face. All twisted up like a damn pretzel because Alexis was defending. I agree with Alexis. This, Kevin didn't strike me as an asshole. Okay, he may, he may have made a bad move sending that text message about what name you want him to, ho you, you, is she going to holler when, you know, in pleasure but at the same time i'm not gonna put that all on carrie i'm not you open the conversation talking about busting nuts and that was not the first time that she made a sexual reference she made a couple of sexual references reva you present yourself as sexual there's there's not a problem with that you can be a woman you can be sexual but sweetheart when somebody returns that same energy towards you let me tell you something you don't come at them crazy that's not fair and you don't try to get them kicked off that is not fair so whatever, everybody deliberates. And now a couple of ladies have to let these guys go. So Tandy, oh, I love Tandy. Tandy has to let Chica go and they're going back and forth. And, you know, of course, Chica's defending himself and I didn't mean it or whatever, whatever. And, you know, um, uh, Tandy's like tomato, tomato, tomato is schematics, blah, blah, blah. 
Tanya was like, all right, your time is over. <laughs> she didn't, she didn't blink an eyelash. It was so easy for her to do. I said, all right, time to go, Chica. And I agree. It's time to go. You didn't make a connection with anyone. And then, um, you scare me. You look like you might hit somebody, but and then Ashima meets up with Terrell. Eck, oh my gosh. Come to find out when the girls were deliberating, just rewind a little bit. When the girls were deliberating, they were talking about the different guys. Come to find out, Terrell was texting the same girls, <laughs> the same, the same, <laughs> the same messages, like the same, the same picture, the same messages. Like, oh gosh, Terrell, I understand. You're trying to cast a wide net. I understand how it goes. You are trying. But at the end of the day, oh my gosh, I think these girls are looking for you to look for a genuine connection. It just seems like you were kind of like early Jimmy Jones where you kind of sticking and moving. But anyway, Terrell meets up with um, Ashima and Ashima has to break the bad news to him. And he gives her, uh, at, at the beginning of the conversation, he gives her a gift. <laughs> she's like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> so she breaks it to him or whatever. And she's trying to talk. He goes, shh. He puts his finger on Ashima's mouth. Oh, Ashima, you are a better woman that you are more of a woman than I am. Cause you, 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 I don't know where that finger, where has that finger been? Where has that finger itch for you to put that on my lip? Oh, <laughs> disgusting. Oh my God. I'm like, Ashima, after you taped this whole scene, I hope you went home and gave your face a good old fashioned scrubbing. Disgusting. But anyway, she lets him go. And then Kimber is talking to Cat Daddy, aka Carrie, and she, she lets him know, we're gonna keep you, but you were close to getting eliminated. So by the end of the episode, Carrie and Reva come to the mutual, um, conclusion that they're done with each other. But here's the gag. Carrie and Reva, Reva's the oldest woman. Carrie is the oldest man. Who's gonna want you to? The fact is, you two are well suited for each other if at minimum, age is the glue to put you together. Reva, who are you gonna go after? Jimmy Jones? Jimmy Jones doesn't want you. You're gonna go after Darren? Darren doesn't want you, um, Reva. Darren doesn't want... London? London's too busy ping in between Alexis and um, De Divine. <laughs> Alexis and Divine. None of the guys in the house want you. Carrie, who are you going to go after? Alexis? Divine? Ashima? Maybe you can have a shot with Nina. But at the end of the day, um, if Reva... And Kerry, don't find a way to get over this and pursue this love connection. Those will be the next two out of the house because nobody wants them but each other. Sorry, I know it's harsh, but it is what it is. Anyway, that was my review of Ready to Love Season 3, Episode 4. Good episode. Um, it was kind of a little bit slow, um, but I really can't say that because last week I was saying that um, the group dynamic was too much and I wanted to see more one-on-one. -on -one, so I got exactly what I wanted. So um, it was a great episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, please, if you have a chance, take a look at my blog, blissfullysinglebean.com. It's my lifestyle blog about single motherhood. Um, and also, if you like what you see, follow me on Twitter. I'd be going off. <laughs> follow me on Twitter or Instagram um, at Beans for Easy. So I appreciate, gosh, I appreciate you guys so much. And honestly, when I say I thank every eyeball that has eyeballed this video, I appreciate it. Thank you for helping a single mom out. Okay? Have a blessed week. Peace. You finished the pumpkin? Yeah. Oh, good. All right, let me take a look at it.